everybody philosophia is here and this is criterion crumbs where i would like to share my thoughts on um, a criterion title today i would like to talk about um eyes without a face it's a movie from 1960 um the director is george franju and it is by number 260. I just watched this movie uh, last night and uh, I had a very um, mixed bag of emotions and thoughts on this movie and I just kept thinking about it um, later and today and I just wanted to share these thoughts with you. Also um, on my letterbox page I'm trying to rate all the movies I watch and I find that very difficult um, especially right after I watch a movie I have just ha such a hard time to put on um, a rating I, except if, if I absolutely adore the movie let me know if you have um, something like like this um, going on with you to have hard time rating somehow um, I want to make myself rate movies and uh, to um, force myself to think deeper what how do i really feel about a movie but a lot of times i'm just not gonna rate it because um i don't even have um stable rating in my in my mind so that's why i call this series crumbs in this um specific occasion it's criterion crumbs because it's a criterion movie and um it's just something that very instantaneous after i watch a movie and um my thoughts will probably change or if i rewatch this movie it will change again um but this is what i think of this specific criterion movie right now and let me know what you think and what are your impressions First of all, um, I just would like to start with the Criterion edition, the representation of the movie, which is a very nice cover. Um, and the inside as well. And I want to uh, point that out. We get a, a nice thick booklet with it too. So if you look at the aesthetics of, of this edition and the book light, this is a very captivating aesthetics for me because the movie is in black and white but Criterion chose to make this movie cover in exclusively and every single detail in the booklet as well black and pink except the mask and that is such a um genius design designing of this edition and with these blatches of um pink color throughout it just gives a kind of distorted elegance to this whole um, aesthetic of, of the edition itself that kind of resonates with the movie um, how the movie is kind of disturbing but at the same time it's very elegant and that's that's another thought that I wanted to share that the movie itself it's a black and white movie and it is very atmospheric and um, high contrast the pictures are um, mostly pleasing to the eye um, the, there is an elegance throughout the movie um, so if you are really into black and white movies this is a, a beautiful movie to watch another interesting thing that i noticed about this movie is the music there is a very interesting music choice 
um, during different scenes that are almost like um, a carnival type of, of um, music and first I thought it's very out of place um, this musical music choice was very out of place and did not fit this um, dread atmosphere of the movie but uh, the more I thought of it um, it actually represents in my opinion how um, crazy is this situation that people found themselves in and uh, makes us viewers uncomfortable listening to the music while we're watching what's happening and um, that's just a very tidbit of how my the character feels so about the movie and um, spoilers ahead if you have not watched it I don't think that spoilers would totally ruin the movie um, but if you don't want spoilers um, I can't guarantee while I'm talking about it that that it's not gonna contain spoilers so um, actually it will contain probably spoilers so decide for yourself but this movie is not I think about um, what hap happens um, it, it's about the atmosphere and, the, and the, the way it makes you think the way it makes you feel and um, so th it's a very compelling story and um, it is about a um, girl whose face got distorted in a car accident um, and the girl's father is a um, surgeon and the film starts with the surgeons lecturing um, a room full of people about skin um, skin to skin grafts and, and how they um, how the body takes it or not take it so he is in in this industry of um, a, a doctor who's a I'm not sure if he's, he's actually a plastic surgeon I don't think so because later on in the movie he sees even mental patients or there is a boy who we don't really know um, what is wrong with this boy but it's clearly nothing that has to do with his skin and it seems to uh, take place the movie partially takes place in this hospital where, where this um, person this doctor works so here is this doctor who's um, studying skin and body rejection and here is his daughter who has no face and we do not see the distorted face it's always hidden in the first part of the movie it's, it's completely hidden either she's turning away laying face down on a pillow or she's wearing this plastic mask which is a very interesting mask choice you cannot really tell based upon the cover but in the black and white with no colors the mask perfectly blends in with her face so if you're just flipping the channels and you see her in this mask you might not even notice first that he's is um very she's wearing a mask because it's it's just perfect how um, the nose and ev the lips everything just looks perfect and it blends in very well with the, the actor's eyes as well so that's another interesting choice that especially nowadays we always want to see as viewers I think and then you're waiting you're waiting when are you gonna turn around when when are we gonna get a glimpse of what happened to this this girl and and uh, what was she look like before what she look like exactly how the mask looked or um, is it resembling her at all and here is another uh, little detail that I noticed um, early on in the movie there is a scene and where there is a piano um, and the, 
there is a picture on the piano and I think I thought that, that that is a picture of the character who uh, whose face is um, destroyed so um, that's a very interesting intricate um, placement by the director to, to put that picture there and that just raises up a, up a little bit of your um, interests like wow that's what she looked like will she look like this again um so and the second half of the movie comes to gore when um actually this father and the father assistant um throughout the so my camera shut off on me um that's not fun so I, I will have to um, paste these two together. Um, uh, where was I? I was I think that this movie has some gore in it. When um, it's so hard to get back after something like this. I was so mad at my camera. So we'll talk. We were talking about. Um, face transplant. So it turns out that the doctor and the doctor's assistant kidnaps uh, women who are um, similar in face structure as the daughter and they take their faces off and um, put, put it on the daughter's face and it never works out. The daughter's uh, body always rejects the the new face and this is where a very gory scene comes in um at one point about the face transplant and i think for 1960 um that was made actually very well and it was made in a way um that really stunned audiences back then i think i've i've heard um read that some People even fainted um, when they lifted this face off and, and they show that and um, I don't even know how it, it passed the rating system because I think um, on one of the special features um, that I'm gonna talk about later in the video um, the director said that when he was asked to make a horror movie he was asked specifically to make one that passes the European rating system and it passes, passes the American rating system so this is what he he come up with so um, good job on that because um, there is a very long build up to this sen scene uh, to the movie also there is a long build up when we finally spoilers we see the distorted face um of of the daughter but um it's not clear it's not zoomed in so it still keeps us in a little bit of um um mystery um and you know how sometimes when you see the actual scary thing it's not even that scary anymore so I think I think that's why it's not um, totally shown long time. It's just that a uh, couple of seconds, and and it's more like your imagination makes the best out of you, and and and, and the fear and dread. And so, um, anything else about the story? There and at the end of the story, the end of the movie as. Um, Kind of relevi uh, relevation there is a so not a solution that the audience wants i think but there is there is a closure so what i really want to talk about it yet is the psychology of this movie which there is a lot of um impossible situations in this movie um because of this tra tragedy that 
the daughter lost her face essentially in a car accident that um, I think the father was responsible for um, it especially with the father being in the medical field studying skin grafts and so on um, it puts him in this impossible situation and um, he has to make this decision that I have the power, I have the knowledge to do this, but um, I don't have any other means but to kill, to make this happen. And um, we learn in the movie that he already did this with his assistant. So he has experience and he know he can he knows he can do it. And the whole movie about this impossible situation trying to make it possible but again the morality kicks in and the morality um, the doctor does not show emotion at all does not show any um, doubts and um, any moral dilemmas but the assistant the assistant uh, throughout the whole procedure um, she has to fetch these women and uh, she has to lure them in and her character shows a lot of, of um, anxiety and, and it shows that she knows that this is wrong morally but she's uh, indebted to the doctor because she got her face so she has to go with it but she knows that that this is wrong so again that's such an impossible situation that um she has to do it but she doesn't want to and there's no way out of it that that ends good um and again on the doctor's side um, there is this again and again his failing he already succeeded with the uh, assistant's face but with his daughter's face he keeps failing and failing and failing and he has to kill more a woman and when finally it seems like that that one of the face worked out it starts to rot off of the daughter's face so he also experiments on animals and everything works out great except the daughter it just seems to be like fate sometimes we are chasing after something that's not meant to be and we cannot accept it and no matter how hard um, we want something and it's not happening we still go after and I think that's what the, the doctor faces as the character and again it, in the, the hope and the hopelessness it worked once but it's not working on his own daughter so um, I think these are just my fast thoughts just thought crumbs of, of this movie um itself let me know what what you think of this movie and, and honestly i as i said i don't know what to rate this movie because i like the psychology behind it i like a lot of aspects of the movie but i can't put my finger on it what's missing or or what what could have made this movie to that next level for me but I appreciate all these things that I, I just um, discussed about it. And sometimes with time I grow, appreciate it even more. And second watches, I notice more, more things. Or the opposite. So we'll see. Another thing I want to mention about the Criterion release and the special features. There is a special feature um, called blood of the beasts 
George Franjou's 1949 documentary about the slaughterhouses of Paris. So the movie ended and I had these mixed feelings. So I always go into the supplements because that's what you do with Criterions. So I went into the supplements of this movie and without even reading much, I clicked on the first, this was the first thing come up. I just saw Blood, Blood of the Beasts. I didn't even read what it's about. I thought it was some kind of, I don't know what I thought really, but I thought it was gonna be about the movie that I just watched. So I started it and with my husband we were, I even a little bit fast forwarded in the beginning, they show scenes of Paris and then we see a scene with a horse. A horse that um, I think they want to eat, eat the horse meat and I was like what, what is, what's happening? And then they show a um, specific gun and they explain how they use that gun to slaughter the horse. And my husband looked at me and he's like, they are not going to show it, right? That they're not going to show it, like in terror in his eyes. And I was like, I don't know, don't, don't look. And then BAM! The shock they showed it and and then the horse fell and we were both in shock and I kept watching it for a while but extremely sick feeling came came upon both of us and even my husband said that this is something that I never be able to erase from my memory so <clears throat> And I, I did not watch it anymore. I'm not sure why they put this specific special features on this um, Blu-ray, but I can tell you uh, it was sickening. And um, this experience made the whole movie, the whole movie watching experience a little bit less. Because it caused us such uncomfortable, especially the reality, this was a, a documentary um, and didn't have to do anything with the movie, so um, beware and don't watch this documentary unless you want to um, because it's really, really graphic. Let me know what you think. What do you think? Why did they put this documentary on on this criterion i wish they would have put something more of an analysis or something else i wish i would have not seen that also so that's it for my thoughts on George Franju's Eyes Without a Face Criterion Collection Edition. Let me know if you've seen this movie and how um, how do you like it? What are your uh, feelings towards this movie? Um, and I um, hope you're enjoying movies every single day. And until next time, bye.